We gather together today because we are people who care about one another, who care about justice, and who care about healing and transformation. We know that injustice plagues our world and that it does not simply stop because we wish it to. And we're continually learning about the harm and the residual layers of suffering that follow any trauma. As a third generation white settler who has lived with privilege and comfort for most of my life, I haven't always understood my place within the systems of power and oppression. I am a learner at the beginning of this journey. I was raised and educated in a culture of people who expected comfort, who believe it is their birthright, and who benefit, often without even knowing, from the white supremacy culture that defines power, authority, and what matters most throughout so much of the world. We know that comfort can be a blessing and that it can sometimes bring healing. And of course, we want all people to have freedom from hunger and poverty, from pain and suffering, from intimidation and fear. But the idea that we should never experience upset or uncertainty, especially when we are people of privilege, is counterproductive. Being willing to be interrupted, to re-examine our beliefs and our priorities can bring growth, learning and positive change, sometimes even healing and transformation. Unitarian Universalists speak proudly of the ways our religious ancestors challenged the dominant cultural beliefs and practices of their times, refusing to be constrained by external or indefensible authorities. We are committed to being a living tradition, continuously changing and growing. But through past challenges, we've also learned that change isn't always gentle. While we found our way to greater openness and have welcomed new perspectives, we'd be kidding ourselves to say that it was simple or easy. And it's important to note that growth is continuous. As we learn, we must change. Good intentions are not enough. Affirming the inherent worth and dignity of all people is not enough. We are being called to action, called to accountability, called into wider relationship as the respectful, responsible way to move forward. The deeper truth around caring and justice for people of privilege is that it's not our place to define the lives of others, but rather it is time to ease our grip on leadership and authority and to share in the collective liberation of all people by interrupting the exclusive structures of power that our ancestors built and that we intentionally or not sustain. As we peel apart the layers of systemic oppression, we are needing to discomfort ourselves, learning new skills in the pursuit of collective healing. Now, those are a lot of aspirational words. Let me close with some simple calls to action, and I'm especially speaking to the people of privilege among us. Choose as a first step or as a next step to release your attachment to comfort. Change and transformation can be hard and the truth can hurt. Being corrected or challenged, especially when we're learning and we make mistakes, is no fun. Choose to keep learning anyway. Commit yourself to forward motion. We won't always agree on root causes or about structures and systems, and we may have different ideas about best actions and solutions. Our tendency can sometimes be to wordsmith or to debate a plan, delaying the needed action. The person best suited to choose the path or to break a new trail is the person at the center of the journey. Self-determination is essential. Committing ourselves to forward motion requires a willingness to step aside, to get our bodies and our structural obstacles out of the way. If you are looking to begin or to deepen your learning, here are some things. Read the 94 Calls to Action by the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. There are some that each one of us can do. Read or listen online to the summary report of the TRC. It's difficult, so pace yourself, but we can't understand the harms Indigenous people experience until we understand both the history and the present. Learn about white supremacy culture, whatever your background. 
because we are all impacted by institutional structures of power and oppression. And then explore them with your friends, your families, your coworkers or congregation. Look at how this culture has shaped your own life as well as the lives of others. And imagine ways you can interrupt your conscious or your unconscious participation and then try them out. And finally, look for invitations from organizations or events to meet people whose life experiences are different from yours. Don't show up with a plan or an agenda. Listen, build relationships and learn. And then when relationships are solidly in place, choose a next step together in the service of love and justice. Thank you and blessed be.